but I think I'm here and you can start asking me questions. Thanks for having me on, Robert, by the way. Ah, oh, Max, he's prepared a question in Norwegian for me. I'm very um, thrilled and excited. <clears throat> oh my god. Uh, okay, well, the reception for Tala has been very good all over, uh, especially in the States. We had very good uh, reviews. Uh, in Norway, we had um, some very good reviews and some not so good reviews. Uh, so it's been, I have the feeling people either they love it or they hate it kind of thing. Uh, well, you're asking how many days we used to uh, shoot the film. Uh, well, Tala was quite a um, exceptional production, I would say. We started filming it in 2009 and then we um, shot the last uh, uh, shot in uh, 2011, so we filmed it over two years, uh, but I guess like two months altogether, maybe. In Chambers we shot in a week. And I'm good, thanks. A bit tired, it's like uh, six o'clock in the morning in Norway, so I'm uh, having my morning coffee. Well, in Chambers, um, well, in Chambers, Alexander, he actually wrote the script in like just a week, I think, because we he suddenly got money to make a short film from the Norwegian government, and uh, he just he had a an idea for a TV series. Um, so in Chambers, it's actually just like a short version of this TV series, which Alexander is hoping to do uh, in the future and I hope he's gonna do it because I think it could be really cool. Uh, so he actually wrote a short film based on his TV script. Um, so that's how it came together. It's like a short version of the TV series. The upcoming TV series, hopefully. Well, um, <laughs> it's so funny you write in Norwegian. Uh, dangerous things happening while we filmed it. Well, I don't know if we really had any dangerous things happening, but we did film it uh, on a very low budget Tala, as you may know. Uh, so, um, I don't know, I just think Alexander had back problems because he, we filmed it in a very small location and he's very tall and he had to kind of bend his back all the way through the production. Uh, so he struggled with his back for a long time after we uh, stopped filming. Yeah, I can repeat the questions. Yes. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I'm just waiting for questions, basically. Um, <laughs> I'm not a very big talker. Uh, but I am Silla Denimo, by the way. Uh, I'm a Norwegian actress and I studied in England for three years. What was the most enjoyable about the filming? Uh, well, I think, especially, I, I, I um, think you're asking about Tala. Um, if you're asking about Tala, the most enjoyable thing, I think, making a film on such a small budget is actually the... Just doing it with so few people can be very cool in a good way, because everything goes very fast you don't have to really wait for all everything to come together like if you're on a big set and there's lots of people so i just think the the bond we have 
between each other, me and the director and the actors. And I think that's what I enjoyed most about filming Tala. Oh my God, you've got a lot of questions going on. Um, so being an actress, what are the type of roles you've been offered so far? Um, lots of, do you receive lots of different requests? Uh, yeah, I, I think I've been lucky. Um, I do consider myself a very versatile actress. Uh, I think I can, my looks can go uh, both ways. Uh, so I've, been doing quite a, um, yeah, a lot of uh, variety in characters so far in my career. Um, I've done comedy for a year. Last year I did a TV series and I did a comedy. And I, I, I played a bitch. <laughs> um, and uh, I've done, I started my career playing Solvay in Pergint singing and you know classical theater so uh, and I do musical theater and I done Tala and uh, looks like I've gonna I'm gonna do a drama film coming up so yeah I think I've been been quite lucky uh, um, an actress who is not a big talker um, <laughs> no I think that's why I play in Alexander's movies he's all his movies are like no dialogue, so. How big was the budget for Tala? Um, yeah, we made the film on absolutely nothing. I, I don't know if you listened to Alexander's chat. I haven't heard it, but I guess he told you that um, this film started as just friends coming together, wanting to do something, wanting to make a movie. Uh, I hadn't made it yet. Alexander, nobody knew who Alexander was. And we just wanted to get out there and make a film. <laughs> I didn't even believe it was going to go to the cinema when we started making Tala. Uh, so we made it. We made the film on like $6,000. Um, but obviously now the budget has been going up in the post-production and with the CGI. And yeah, we've all been paid. <laughs> so I think it landed on um well like seven million norwegian kroners which is um like quite um, different from seven million dollars it's much less so a very low budget how many weeks did you film for tala well we filmed it over two years and we filmed but we filmed like here and there i was working at a theater at the time so we filmed in the weekends and um basically maybe all together maybe two months uh but yeah spread over two years so it's spelled talia t-h-a-l-e which is actually a norwegian girl's uh, name uh, so the title has quite a few meanings it's Tala as in the female name the girl name and it's um, obviously um, related to tail as in my tail if you've seen the film uh, and uh, tail as in fairy tale and yeah also Tala means um, speech in Norwegian uh, and if you've seen the film Tala doesn't speak throughout the film so it has quite a uh, lot of meanings <clears throat> nice. If you could play any character, what role would be your dream role? Um, well, I think I've always wanted to play, uh, a, to try and portray a person that's lived. Um, someone that everyone knows um, from history. Um, or maybe like a 50s war film drama <laughs> every girl's dream uh, but yeah maybe a person that everyone has a relation to or um, yeah a historic person I think that would be a big challenge like both physic with my physicality and the voice and yeah What's your favorite gen genre personally, horror or drama? Well, actually I do Florence Nightingale, yeah. 
that could be cool. <laughs> yeah, I'd love portraying someone like that. Um, what's my favorite genre? Well, actually, I do really, really like the horror genre. Um, I'm a bit scared now, actually, because it's like, it's Friday the 13th, isn't it? Um, well, it's Saturday in Norway, but it's still very, like, dark here and... Uh, yeah, I do really like watching horror uh, and thrillers. I do watch them a lot, actually. Like, like really a lot. <laughs> and I'm always scared, but I, I, do, I, I think I have the horror gene. I read somewhere some, some people have the horror gene and they really like watching horror. And if you have it, you have it. And if you don't, you don't. And I, I think I really have it. What's my favorite horror film? Uh, I think maybe I'll have to say maybe The Shining. I don't know. It's just brilliant with a brilliant acting and it's a classic. Uh, yeah, maybe Shining. Yeah, the horror genre is a good thing. It's, um, yeah. I agree. I totally agree. And all the fans from the horror genre. I just love the fans of the horror genre. <laughs> They're also devoted. Yeah, it's a good one, The Shining. I think I watched it like, yeah, quite a lot. It's brilliant. Or maybe even like The Exorcist. It's good. Have you done any horror conventions? Oh my god, my Norwegian is not good enough. Uh, conventions, is that like, um, since Tala came out, conventions, that's, if I've done any... Can you just explain to me conventions very quickly? <sighs> or I'll need to Google Translate it. Okay, I'll Google. Uh, events where horror fans gather with a... Yeah, I have, I have. Uh, I've been traveling quite a lot with uh, Tala. Been traveling to Russia and Portugal and to Texas, uh, to LA. Um, yeah, Sweden, Finland, England. Been quite a lot of, you know, when you make a film, you get a ticket to travel all over the world, for like a year if the film goes well. Uh, so I met with horror fans all over and I just love it. It's like a special audience. They're all so committed and, I don't know, they just really love, love the genre. Love film. Will it come to the US? Yeah, Tala has been to the US. It wasn't a big release, uh, but it's been, it was like in five cities in the cinema for two weeks or something. And... Uh, it should be on iTunes still. Uh, I know it was on iTunes and uh, some other uh, channels. And it's out on DVD and um, Blu-ray. I believe Tala has US distribution right now. Yeah, that's correct. It has. <clears throat> Horror Hound. Uh, would love to have it. Horror Hound is a con here in the US. Um, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. You should just, you know, send a mail to our producer and we're all nice people. So, uh, who is the US distributor or, of Tala? Well, that's it's Epic Pictures in the States and it's Metrodome in UK. Just have to drink some coffee. Um, I am a mor morning person, but it's very, it's very early. Yeah, epic pictures. And they're also making the sequel. We're doing a sequel for Tala, which is probably going to be a bigger release. Uh, it's going to be an English language sequel. So, um, um, yeah. Hopefully we start filming in 2014, so um, uh, with a proper budget and stuff, so that should be cool. Oh, thank you so much for being up with us so early. No, I just, uh, I, I think it's very nice being here. I love talking to the fans, so that's, 
<clears throat> we definitely want to promote your films on IHTV. Well, thank you. That's lovely. Internet is great for promoting, so in these days, so that's... Metrodome, they took all. Okay. <laughs> well, I actually know the people, some of the people behind Iron Sky. Um, tell your producer to watch out. Yeah, he does listen to me, so I'll give him some Huldra... I'll show him some Huldra muscles if he doesn't listen. So, beyond acting, do you have any aspirations for authoring writing? Uh, yeah, I do actually write a lot. I, I, keep, <laughs> I keep a book with me at all times and I do write like, it's full of poems and stuff. And I've been doing some, try to do some script work, um, but I do think my heart is in acting um, and I think I'm in the right place. Um, yeah. I don't have the patience, I think, to be a writer, like for real, to really sit down and write. I think uh, I'm a very, don't know, I'm just, I do really enjoy being an actress. Um, yeah. How is making horror films different in Norway than in the United States? Well, obviously, I think we do make uh, films for less money than you do. Uh, and I think that's why um, Scandinavia is quite interesting now for Hollywood. They keep um, coming over and taking our directors. <laughs> Alexander, he was signed just after doing Tala. And I think part of the reason, obviously, because he's very talented, but I think also they're very interested in how we make films without having... Uh, huge budgets and um, so I think that's an, a big difference I think we also we have to think different because you know with um, being such a small country in the middle of uh, nowhere or <laughs> yeah it's a very small country we uh, do have to think different to get our films out there and um, yeah maybe that's the biggest difference it's less money and but uh, yeah, apart from that, I guess it's the same everywhere. We have the same cameras as you have and yeah, <laughs> the same people on set, smaller sets probably. Uh, no need to be a writer. No. <laughs> Is Alexander directing the sequel to Tala now that he's been signed to a US studio deal? Uh, yeah. He is. He is directing it, he is writing it, uh, and that's part of the reason. I know some... It's actually quite cool, because I think a lot of studios was interested in remaking Tala. Um, I think we've had quite a lot of... The producer had quite a lot of uh, discussions with quite big names, uh, but I really think they chose to go with Epic Pictures, because Epic really liked to the first film and they wanted to keep they want to keep the atmosphere they want to keep Alexander's signature uh, obviously try to make it in a bigger scale reach out to more people but they really want to uh, continue what Alex started and so he's going to be the heart behind the sequel he's going to write it he's going to direct it so um, that's good it's not going to be a, an Americanized version of Tala it's going to be um, very much in Alexander's spirit, which is cool. We don't want to lose ourselves to Hollywood. <laughs> they have to steal me as well. Well, send us your CV, you know, you never know. Uh, would you act in a UWVE ball film? UV ball film. <laughs> uh, uh, I didn't understand the question. This might make some people mad. So is that a bad question? I don't know. We have to explain it. <clears throat> you ball film. Infamous director. Oh, I see. Okay, he's an infamous director, but you know. But you know who he is, obviously. Um, he's a German director. Okay. Well, 
I don't know. I need to read a script, I guess. Um, I get a lot of scripts now, and I, I, I read them. And uh, Well, I'm not in a position yet where I can like pick and choose between every big director out there. So, obviously, I read the scripts, and I um, if it's a good script, I really... I. Normally say yes, yeah. Known for big budget, highly criticized films. Okay, highly criticized. Well, it depends, you know. Easy Max. <laughs> it's a name, yeah. Thanks. Well, I don't know is my answer. I haven't seen his films, so... Uh, to know what kind of films it is. <laughs> Just drinking my coffee, waiting for you guys. I can show you my room, but it's not very interesting, so... And I didn't clean it yesterday. Would you do a video game-based movie? Yeah! I think I could do that. Play a... Love to play like a superhero woman. That would be cool. <laughs> Just need to go to the gym before. A couple of times. Depends on the video game, I guess, as well. Well, everything depends on the script and the story, you know, as an actress. Is there any directors or actors in particular you would love to work with? <laughs> yeah, there is. I'm very like with music, with films, with acting, I'm very versatile. I do listen to a lot of different music. I see a lot of different films. Uh, I try to like broaden my perspective all the time. Um, so there's lots of directors I'd love to work with. It's difficult to name just one. But I do really like the films of um, Haneke, Michael Haneke. God, is that the name? <laughs> Uh, uh, uh. You went to acting school in England, according to IMDB. Any reason to choose a school there versus, versus Norway? Well, I chose England because I didn't get into the <laughs> National Theatre School in Norway. Uh, they only take like four girls every year and it's very hard to get in. Normally you have to apply for many years, uh, but I didn't do that. I was very impatient and I thought, you know, I'm going to be an actress while I'm young, so I'm just going to go to England. And, and I do think the schools are much better in England. Not maybe much better, but they are very well known for their, you know, um, uh, good standard. Uh, so I'm glad I went there, but obviously there's um, if you if you if you're gonna work in Norway, it's quite uh, it's easier to make a career if you study in, in Norway. Um, but I'm kind of glad I went to England. It's something different. You come back and you have something else. You've been um, yeah, gives you just a little bit of a different perspective. And I also think it's very good for anyone just to live abroad for a while and maybe especially if you're going to be an actress because you need to you know portray life all the time and you need to grow as a person and you obviously do that when you move uh, abroad from your safe little home what would be your dream role well I just um, uh, oh you were going to make a comment about how good my English is. That's, oh, that's so nice. I feel like I, it's always when I haven't spoken English for a while, I always feel a bit, um, yeah. And it's so early in the morning. <laughs> I'm going to have some coffee again. I'm a coffee addict. Uh, yeah, my dream role. I, I did answer that question earlier to portray someone who's lived and someone who oh, uh, any, anyone has like a relation to, I think. There's a lot going on now with Norwegian mythology and um, there's a lot of Norwegian Viking films uh, in the making. Um, so I'd love to play. Well, there's a part actually um, that I'd love to play. <laughs> she hasn't lived. She's just like a kind of a fantasy character, but it's a goddess called Freya. That would be one of my dream roles.
the goddess of uh, what she's she's the goddess of yeah she's like Venus kind of thing uh, I know we I hope the sound is good by the way um, yeah I know we mentioned Hollywood stealing people away but if you started getting the bulk of your offers from the states would you consider living in the US we mentioned the we mentioned a Viking slasher film to Alexander. Great, great, cool. I'd love to do that. That would be cool. Combining my two, maybe my two favorite genres, like horror and uh, costume dramas. I don't really love watching costume dramas. I just, I'm a girl. I love dressing up, so. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I consider moving to the States, definitely. I've been over there like two times this year just to try out a bit and but in these days you can really make it in your own country and 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 be kind of there's a lot of people now in Norway uh, being picked for parts in 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 Hollywood so I think I wouldn't just move there drop everything I have here and just be one in 10,000 people I'd I have so much going for me here now so I and I hope I hope the sequel for Tala is going to do well in the States and I hope some of the other projects I'm involved with are going to do well in the States and I hope that's going to be my ticket into the US uh, market. I think that's the way to do it now. You can sit like me now. I can sit in my room in Norway and connect with people um, over the Atlantic, which is amazing. And it's a different, you know, it's a different time. You can, you can really be in your own country and you can do it from there. You don't have to. You don't have to necessarily move to LA to reach out to uh, the world. Yeah. So yeah, but I'd consider moving to the states definitely. I love living in America. I love America. I'm a very America fan. I think I've lived there in a previous life. Viking slasher film. LA sucks. It's covered in, a, in smog anyway. Well, I agree. LA isn't my favorite city on, on the planet. Um, I don't even drive. So <laughs> I was there just walking around and uh, felt like I was going to be hit by a car every minute. So yeah, I'm a walking person. I do love like New York and um, big cities like that. But it's good. I think LA is good if you do have a film. That's the place to be, you know. You get the film. If you love films, it's like, it's all over the place, you know, the movie history. and But it's not, no, it's not my favorite city. If you had any advice for actors, actresses just starting out, what would you tell them? Just stop and do something else. <laughs> no. Um, well, I'd just tell them that you really have to want it. There are so many people in these days with all the talent TV shows going on, you know. I think I, I wanted to be an actress before I had a cell phone, before the cell phone even, you know, came. Uh, and I wanted it like 120%. My dad was a mus musician and I, I got all the um, culture stuff uh, growing up. Uh, and I think you really, really, really have to want it so bad. Otherwise, it's not like worth it because it's a very hard uh, path to go down. So you have to want it. And I think if you want it enough, you, you probably do have the talent, you know. Um, yeah. You do know what it takes. You've been doing some thinking. and Because uh, talent is just like a little part of it. You do have to have the drive and the stamina. And I don't know. You just have to be crazy, I think. <laughs> Yeah. My God, uh, it's like 6.40 here. Oh my God, it's going so quickly. Cool. Uh, yeah. And take your education, I would say, or get some practice. Um, read books, you know, educate yourself or get your education just to prepare yourself for for work um yeah because i think something that's very hard it, it's uh it's when you're between jobs and i think every actor has been between jobs 
no matter how big you get, you you do get between jobs, and uh, that's when it's hard to you know um, be um, disciplined enough to to practice and to um, get yourself out there and talk to people. And so yeah, you do need to really want it. Is it time for you to wake up? <laughs> oh. Do I seem very tired? Yeah, I probably do. Um, yeah, yeah, it's 6.40. Um, yeah, it's, I think I'm going to go to bed after this, actually, and then I'm going to get up and go to the gym. Um, although I'm drinking a lot of coffee, so I'm not sure I'm going to... Um, um, maybe I'll watch a horror film, you know. It's, um, it's quite cool. <laughs> Any crazy stories from the shooting of Tala? Well, um, yeah. The whole shooting of Tala was crazy. I remember, because we didn't know at that time, you know, is this film even going to make it to the cinema? I think Alexander really believed it. I didn't, um, but I'm. I choose to be. <laughs> I choose to be, you know, realistic until the um, until the opposite is prove, proven. Um, yeah, we did. Did you hear about the swine flu? Did you have the swine flu in the states? But we managed to get some money finally for Tala uh, for all of us to get plane tickets because we filmed it in the north and we all all the actors live in Oslo and we finally managed to get some money and fly every actor over um, for some shooting for a week for an intense week of shooting and the first day Alexander got really like started to throw up and stuff and uh, it turned out he had the swine flu and all of a sudden we all had the swine flu and we were all throwing up for a week uh, so we did have a lot of um, maybe it's not a crazy story but there's a lot of we did have a lot of you know uh, I think we were like this close to giving up the whole thing because there was so many thing, uh, things working against us all the time but I guess it's crazy being nude on set with like three guys throughout the shooting, that's quite crazy. Um, yeah. Were any applications of special effects painful to deal with? Well, if I understand your question correctly, um, no, because uh, with all the special effects, all the CGI came in, obviously, after the shooting. Um, the only thing I, I remember from the special effects was my uh, tail. We ha I just had like a mark when we shot the, um, wouldn't say famous shot, but it's quite famous. It's been seen by like 20 million people on YouTube, our trailer. It's a shot where I sit and look at my tail. Uh, and I just remember having a mark uh, on my back. Um, basically, that's all I noticed from the special effects. All the holders and stuff, they came in uh, after the film, in post-production. So I didn't grow a real tail. I shouldn't say that. I should say I have a tail. Um, yeah, yeah, I have a tail. I'm going to grow my tail now for the sequel, if I'm doing the sequel. I can't tell you yet. Uh, we did have the swine flu for a bit. Oh, bless. You are pragmatic. I like that. Thank you. Uh, not me personally, but people in the States did. Yeah, it's everywhere. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> well, we all, ha we all had swine flu. Yeah. Totally just stole our time away. Mm. <laughs> Crazy. We actually filmed for like 24 hours at one point because we had to, uh, it was quite a lot of, lot of stress filming Tala, you know, when you're so few people on set, it's, some things go quicker, but some things just, you know, you do reach a lot of, I think Alexander was quite, he was the cameraman, he was uh, the photographer, he was the director, um, yeah, so that was quite crazy in itself. I'm so glad we did it, but I wouldn't do it again, I think. Making a film like that, and you don't know how it's going to turn out, so it's quite, um, you know. In some countries, there's a lot of 
government involvement in the making of a film, sometimes directly with funding. Is it like that in Norway? Yeah, it is. We have um, we have a film fund, and they uh, give money to projects every year. Like I think it's four times every year you can apply, and uh, we didn't actually apply before making Tala because we. I think we just. Alexander is very young, and I think we just thought um, he's not going to get it. We're not going to wait for it. It's a long process to get money. We're going to do it for the sequel, I think. Um, although it's going to be a Hollywood production as well. Um, but yeah, so obviously it's good getting the funding. Um, but yeah, it's a government, uh, well, like a state film fund that gives money to projects. So it's good to get that kind of money. But we also have like something called um, work credit. So you can um, invest in the project and that's what we did with Tala and then you can get money after the film is shot if the film does well and sells over a certain amount of cinema tickets and um, yeah. So that's a good way to do it as well. But lots of film has like lost money on it in Norway uh, and people haven't gotten paid and so it's quite a risky a risky business uh, so what would be your advice to be a budding actor or actress wanting to get a start in independent horror well um well independent horror if you want to act in independent horror well i think if you want to act in you can't really say if you want to act in independent horror, you have to think if you want to be an actor or an actress, um, you, uh, I, I would say get your education and do it the hard way, you know. Um, or if you don't want to do that, if you don't want to pay for it or just start practicing reading books, you have to practice, you know, you can't just, I think every actor that's made it, I think it's very few that doesn't have, you know, uh, the the education or been working hard on it for years and so I would say if you want to be an actor in any genre you just have to practice and um, realize it's probably going to take time there's a, very few people making it like this so yeah uh, just keep um, you know reading books practicing and Sending out, making a showreel maybe, sending it out to people, directors, putting it on YouTube. There are so many ways to kind of reach out to people in these days if you have talent. So, How did you raise the money for Tala? Well, we got some local funding just like a little bit. Like I said earlier, we made the film on like, we made the film on $6,000. Uh, and, and then we got a distributor, which is quite the total wrong way to do it. But they came in with money after the film to do the CGI and the post-production and, and then we earned money on the film that, after the film doing well. But from the beginning, this was like an investment project between five friends, basically. MSBI asked that question. Yes, you did. <laughs> and tell us a little about the film Patriot Act. Um, Well, Patriot Act is a US production and I'm cast in it, but I'm not sure at the moment what's going to happen to it, but it's a sci-fi uh, movie. That's all I can say. What do you think separates Norwegian horror from other regions? Uh, that's an interesting question. I think Scandinavian uh, stories are quite popular in these days. Uh, I, I know they're going to do a remake of The Troll Hunter now in, in LA, in Hollywood. And you remake everything, by the way. Um, I don't like the remaking thing. <laughs> but yeah, uh, there's a lot of... I think the world is always looking for new stories. And it, seem, it seems like um, Hollywood. I hate saying Hollywood all the time, but that's, you know, the film center uh, for us. Uh, and I think they're looking for new stories and new um, directors and... New, all the time and I think right now they do look at Scandinavia there's a lot of um, mythology and stories to, to take from, from Scandinavia and, um, so that's 
I think what separates Norwegian horror, I think what separates every country is just like making, I guess if you make horror based on um, Norwegian myths or Norwegian traditions, which you often tend to do, you know, you often tend to write stories about uh, what's near you or <laughs> what, what, what you've heard growing up. And um, so, yeah, I think that's what's special about Norway right now. We, we uh, use our stories and we use our mythology and the nature. And um, it's been like a wave of films coming with dead snow and um, um, yeah, the troll hunter and um let the right one in is that the name um yeah so i think yeah that's probably what separates it i guess in every country it's just using um your own material other than that it's the same you know filmmaking is the same everywhere except from the money and the IMDb description was really interesting. That's why I asked. Okay, just keep asking if you have more questions, if I didn't answer it correctly. Troll Hunter was my intro to Norwegian films in general. Oh, cool. Yeah, I like it. I like Troll Hunter. It's very good CGI. <clears throat> Let the right one in was brilliant and did not need a remake. No, I agree. It's a very... It's a very thing, this Hollywood thing, making it in English language. Um, they can't listen to <laughs> other languages, which is quite, I don't know. I can, I can maybe see where people are coming from, but I can watch films in like French and, and Spanish and, and really enjoy them. But, but some people do, don't like re reading uh, su subtitles, I guess, but I, don't know, I think that's a bit lazy of our generation. I think we should start reading subtitles. <laughs> you don't have to, to remake everything. And I'm so glad we're not remaking Tala. I'm so glad we're doing a sequel instead. I think it would be, would be fun maybe to watch it, but I think it would be hard as well. What was it like on your first set of a film? Were you really nervous? Oh, that's a nice question. Um, my first film, when did I do my first film? Well, the first fi time I really discovered that I wanted to do movies, I think, was um, doing Per Gint. I did Per Gint in Cairo, in front of the Sphinx, <laughs> if you've heard of that. Uh, it's like an Ibsen production, very classical play, uh, but they filmed it for TV. Uh, quite a big, big production company in Norway filmed it for TV and they were the people saying to me, you know, you should be on camera, you, you suit the camera for, for act, your acting suits the camera. And so I didn't really think, I did the play at that time and I didn't really think about the camera and, but yeah, I always struggle with a bit of nerves, you know, even now when I do like film, TV or stage, um, and I think it's maybe a good thing. I think it makes you more focused. And I think the day you start not caring about it or the day you start not being nervous, you probably don't care so much anymore. Uh, and maybe you're not as focused as you should be. Obviously, nerves can get in the way. So uh, it's good to keep them under control, which can be difficult sometimes. I've been very nervous before going on stage and on set. Um, but the first time... I think the, the the very first time I was like on set was maybe perhaps in Chambers, the short film. Uh, and, and I do remember being nervous, but I do, I'm very, I think I'm good at blocking out stuff. I think I'm good at, uh, when I'm on set, I think I'm good at uh, focusing and concentrate, um, concentrating. And I think that's what you need to do. You need to be really focused and you need to forget about, you know, your looks and um, all the superficial stuff around you. You just have to focus and be in the character. And actually, I find it very um, much easier being focused, uh, doing, being an actress than like <laughs> being myself in real life. Uh, I think that's why I, I enjoy acting as well. I, I, I'm able to just forget everything around me and, and be concentrated. And it makes me feel really uh, at peace. So it's weird because I can be nervous about a lot of stiff stuff in, in my life. And, but when I'm an actress, I actually feel very um, relaxed, which I enjoy. 
And I think a lot of actors have it like this. I know a lot of actors that are quite nervous actually for being on stage and have stage fright. And, um, but I do find that a lot of them um, focus and are able to concentrate when doing work. Uh, yeah. Yeah, well, I was nervous, I guess. <laughs> uh, do you find it easier for you to act on stage or on camera? Well, um, it's been a lot of, it's been actually uh, two and a half years now since, since I did stage work, um, which I really miss. I do want to swap between the two because I think it's good practice. I wouldn't say it's easier, no. Uh, I think it's uh, I think it's two different things. I think the process um, on beforehand is quite the same. You sit there with your script and you, you know, you work on the character and... Uh, but actually, I think the biggest difference is when you actually are going to perform it, if you perform in front of the camera or on stage, because filming is obviously very technical. There's a... Some people say filming is more real, you know, or for the audience, film film do look look more real and stage looks more maybe uh, staged. <laughs> but I, I think that um, film work is very unreal. It's often you have to, you know, step a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right and look a little bit up. It's all about cheating, you know, and, and being able to focus and concentrate and portraying the character in very technical circumstances because there's so many technical things to to um, um, to be aware of um, you know the camera the lightning the sound man the the action and then you have to perform like that and um, yeah so I would say none of them are easier um, but it's um, what was the question again? Yeah, none of them are easier. It's just different. Uh, and also with the voice, it's different. Mm -hmm. um, I think I read somewhere in a book, and I think it's very true. Uh, you have to, when you're on film, you have to talk to, basically you have to talk um, more quiet, or you have to think that the camera is quite, well, your partner is your microphone, and the microphone is often like very close, maybe even like here. Uh, so if you over... If you over, if you talk too loud on camera, it can often look like you're overacting. Uh, I fa uh, find. Any final questions for Celia? No questions, but feel very privileged to have had this chat tonight. Oh, thank you. That's lovely. Um, well, I feel privileged to be here. Thank you. Ah. Oh. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank, thanks for having me, Robert. And um, yeah, anytime. <laughs> get some sleep. Yeah, will do. Yeah, we'll get some sleep. Just going to finish my coffee and then have some sleep. <laughs>